What's up, buds? Kevin Morby, Valley. Well, we're at the most beginningest part of the hour here at Radio Free Fargo, KRFF 95.9, LPFM, 7014784959, RadioFreeFargo.org. You can go there. You can stream that here, wherever, anywhere. You can donate as well. We encourage that because this station is running not on awesome. Exactly. You know, we're running on awesome and money given to us by you. So go to RadioFreeFargo.org. There's a spot there you can donate, and we appreciate that. Uh, the Thursday, noon, 2-3, you got side stage with Trav. That happened. And then you got uh, just an hour of uh, automation. And then from 4 to 5 is Canada Talk ND with Wilson. That's what we're sitting inside right now. Then Stinky Arts Music Mart, which actually today that's not going to happen, but normally it does. Then uh, Locals on the 8, and then Radio Free Madness, and that's your Thursday here at Radio Free Fargo 95. Point nine, But now, between 4 and 5, we talk about cannabis legalization. We talk about a positive light. And uh, I hammer it home. It's not bad. It's good. Please, let us let us have it. Let us have it. So we'll talk about, uh, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news at 420. And I got some stuff to talk about. After the first musical break, you know, I uh, I got something. I'm, I'm going to talk about Delta 8 again quick because it seems like, I don't know what's going on with Delta 8, but it seems like they're trying to sneak it out from under us. Because I suppose they heard that it works, you know. They, they probably heard that it works. So, you know, this is like, it's like stinking, uh, you know, dirty uh, foot loose all over again. You know, no dancing and no Delta 8 here, mister. But anyway, this hour is brought to you by Black Cottage Body Butter, Black Cottage uh, Alchemy on Facebook. And uh, Becky's Body Butter is what uh, I'm a fan of. She has other things as well. It's made with kosher, full-spectrum CBD, North Dakota grown hemp. It's got hemp seed oil, mango butter, and uh, the three ingredients that the wise men brought to baby Jesus. This works for pain, inflammation, eczema, psoriasis. And I've used it. My family's used it. And anybody that I've heard use it, they say, boy, you ought to try using it. So this hour is brought to you by Black Cottage Body Butter. You can go to Odds to Ends Gift Shop. 2111 Main Avenue East, and you can get your stuff there, or you can go to Tochi Products. And while you're in there, say hi from Wilson to Joe, and then sign the Indy for Freedom of Cannabis Act. It's uh, the petition's in there. It's going to be pretty obvious, especially if you go in, you know. And uh, Orange Records, you can sign it there, and there's other places around. Uh, you can get a hold of Indy Cannabis Caucus, and they'll get you going if you want to help, blah de blah 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 because apparently... You know, it's the only thing happening all of a sudden, you know. I mean, politicians made a lot of noise, but uh, at the end of the day, not a whole lot happened. Churches United for the Homeless provide shelter, support, and case management services for men, women, and families. Embracing housing first principles, we strive to move residents from the shelter to stable housing as quickly as possible. Open to the public daily, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. The community center offers free hot meals daily, a free community bread shelf, and access to a shelter nurse for information and referrals. For more information, visit their website at www.churchesunited.org or call them at 218-236- 0372 Canada Talk ND with Wilson. That's what's happening now. We're going to talk about cannabis and cannabis only. Um, I want to say, well, forgive me to those folks that were listening last week and realized that I played safety dance five times. But it's April Fool's Day. My daughter and I planned that. And she was sitting there looking at me, which was an extra stress. But we had to listen to safety dance five times. I mean, you guys could have went somewhere else, but I had to sit through it. So that was a big April Fool's on you guys. Uh, I'm going to play some of the songs that I said I was going to play today. And uh, we're at that right now. Here's uh, Eddie Nine Volt, The Come Up, brand new. And then we'll be right back. Okay. Yes, indeed. Eddie Nine Volt, The Come Up. That's 2020 blues. Uh, again, I, I dig that. It's rainy out here in Fargo, Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 LPFM. You're listening to Canada Talk ND with Wilson. We're going to talk about cannabis in a positive light. At 420, I'll open a legitimately stinky bag of cannabis news, and we'll talk about it. Well, you'll listen, and I'll talk, you know. I've done it before, you know. Uh, as in a matter of fact, I think this is my 70th show that I've came to you guys and talked to uh, you guys about cannabis in a positive light, the legal struggles that we go through. And, uh, again, I couldn't help but notice somebody posted on Facebook about uh, and it was a house bill 1213 which i guess i assumed everything was done but maybe amendments are sneaking through 
But anyway, I started seeing that uh, this lady, she says Delta 8 THC is illegal in the state of North Dakota. So I go, well, I don't know. I seen it on the shelf just the other day in Fargo, North Dakota. So I Googled, is Delta 8 THC legal in North Dakota? And this is what I get from Google. Cause, and it, you know what I mean? If it's Google, it's, it's, it's the law. You know, and they know everything about the election, too. Uh, anyway, yes, Delta 8 THC is legal in North Dakota. As of today, 1029-2020, Delta 8 THC is legal according to North Dakota state law. Like the federal law, North Dakota has legalized all derivatives, cannabinoids, and isomers of hemp, including all tetrahydrocannabinols other than Delta 9 THC, which, because the, the funny gray area is it is THC, but it's Delta 8, and it's a derivative of the hemp plant, which the hemp law of d to d d I can't remember what it was, but it was, you know, the hemp law. It included all this in there. But what I don't know is why she said it. I'd play the audio or the video, but again, I don't know if I can, and I don't know if you can hear it. But basically, this House Bill 123 might have an amendment in it that I don't know about. So you guys that, you know, like to stay up in the political, uh, you know, murky waters as it were in Bismarck maybe you can find out because I don't even know what that house bill 1213 included but somehow there might be some legalese they got it through the people that after you know like say now it's no longer uh, legal so I'm not saying run out right now and buy a bunch I wouldn't say that because that just wouldn't be you know who would say that but you know I just because I read that yes, Delta 8 THC is legal in North Dakota, I'm not entirely sure. I still, you know, because this was just like last week, somebody posted this. and uh, But Delta stinking 8 is good. And it, it seems to work really well. You know, so if there was no pushback because they realized that Delta 8 was taking care of their problems, they wonder, well, why, why aren't advocates hollering anymore? Why are they, you know, whispering to themselves, playing Jenga and, you know, Connect Four, all at the same time, I might add, listening to Alice in Wonderland, uh, Pink Floyd to Wall. I don't know. It sounds like a lot of stuff to be doing. But anyway, Can I Talk India with Wilson. Every Thursday, we talk about cannabis in a positive light. And that's what we're doing now. At 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And we'll just, you know, we'll wade through it like paddles and pudding. But uh, until then, we're just going to uh, entertain you guys. But yeah, Delta 8. It says it's legal. But I'm wondering if that House Bill 123 didn't do some 1213. Yeah, didn't change things. You know, because I, at the end of the day, I thought it was weird that you can buy THC Delta 8 if it's from a hemp plant. Because I don't know, I'm not real smart, but I, I wouldn't think it mattered where you got your THC from if it was a Delta and it was a THC. So, I don't know. It sounds to me like the principal found out that, uh, you know, shooting spitballs through the, you know, the girls' locker room all of a sudden, you know, is where all the kids are. You know what I mean? And so you got to get them all back to school. It's almost like the, you know, the legislators are like, oh, they don't, they're not being bullied by our, you know, our pushy tactics and our, you know, our rigid, you know, legalization kind of parameters. Why? Why are they okay with it? Oh, they're they're finding relief in Delta 8. Oh, they're finding relief. You know what I'm saying? Well, then we can't let it happen. And that's just crazy. Because otherwise, I don't know why they're stopping it. Outside of just being poopy pants and trying to rain on, uh, you know, our Delta 8 parades. Which brings me up to the second musical break of this adventure that we're on. Uh, it's wainy outside here in Fargo. And uh, the sun should e could easily be shining wherever it is you are. But as long as, you know, you don't need an umbrella for the brain rain, we're solid. All right. So here, I got to thank Kim for this. But this is uh, because I got high, the positive remix. And uh, I chill. Yeah, I chill, man. Ironically, so I'll see you in a bit. I care about everything. Started planting seeds. My private property. That was Langhorn Slim. Had your boy Twain on there. That was fantastic. I uh, I was sweeping a lot of stairs yesterday, and I came across the new Langhorn Slim. And then, uh, of course, Afro Man. That was the positive remix. And uh, 420, we opened a big fat bag of cannabis news. And today's no different. You hear that sound? That means it's almost kind of talking to you with Wilson. We talk about cannabis in a positive light. And today's no different. 
Philip Hannahead Pilko, Sundays. Can of Talk ND on the YouTube. You can hear this too. I'll let this play a little and then we'll talk about cannabis. Okay, dudes? See you in a minute. Yo, it's Wilson from Canatalk ND. You know, the super awesome show you're getting ready to listen to. I think you should go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll wait. Okay, enjoy the show. Okay. Hello, 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 everybody. Canatalk ND with Wilson on KRFF 95.9 LPFM Moorhead Fargo. Here we are. We're going to do it. I'm excited. You guys should be excited. I got a chill show for you guys. And let's start it off with Mexico. Huh? Okay, so this is for marijuana moment. But anybody that knows anything about, because first of all, when Mexico legalizes it, which I think they actually have now, that you can be 18 and over. And I just remember like kids going on cruises, you know, and they their whole thing was like they could drink, you know, but it wasn't healthy for you. But just imagine now if you visit, you know, all those cool places in uh, Mexico, like a bunch of names I can't think of. But, uh, man, maybe Panama? But anyway, 18 and over, that's going to be cool. But here's what these guys are great at. They're asking for extensions. And they've been asking for extensions since 2018. It was actually late 2018 in October because I remember uh, Measure 3 was in full tilt. And uh, I remember looking at anything that was like a win and thinking, oh, boy, and we talked about it. And it's now 2021. And... The initial deadline to make that change was October 2019, but for one reason or another, senators have repeatedly asked to push back the timeline, and the court has accepted each request. Uh, Senators have pointed out that the bill as it stands is critically internally conflicted on provisions concerning limits, the definition of hemp, which, again, Delta 8 is a derivative of hemp, which, you know, the adults don't seem to like and they're telling us kids who don't know how to think about ourselves and you know our personal freedoms are at stake i think it's because they realize that you don't really need cannabis if you can get a concentrated delta eight and again some uh, full spectrum cbd and you'd be golden and so i just don't think they like it and it's a you know they think like they, they there's a part of the joke that legislators weren't in part you know in involved in that they didn't tell them hey we don't care what you guys do about the you know thc delta nine because we got delta eight dummy you know what i'm saying kind of talking to you with wilson every thursday we open a big fat bag of cannabis news at 420 and that's what we're doing now and i'm basically telling you as we get started that mexico is pushing it again so still it seems senators are leaning toward that option so let's see um they asked the court on wednesday night for more time to work on the cannabis bill's provisions but a top lawmaker said on thursday that wasn't the case and they are still deliberating on whether to submit the request um majority leader ricardo monreal avila he says i'm convinced of the need to regulate it i've always been a promoter of this reform as it was approved in the senate so it has been approved in the senate it was the product of many months of work However, see, I mean, you guys know what I feel about however. However is the thing that shows up right before they tell you your dog's died. You know, your dog's dead. It's like, hey, your dog's dead. However, the wind only ripped off half your shingles on your garage. You know what I mean? That's a poor example. But however is like a Band-Aid they get ready to put on the wound they just caused. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so Delta 8, I'd do some research about that. And and if it, if it works for you... I mean, I'm not saying hurry up and buy it because, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I don't even know. I can't suggest anything. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just an ex-crackhead trying to live. But it seems like they think that they found out that we like Delta 8 and now they're going to take it away from us because that's how they do. And and that's another thing I wanted to mention. And except for Indy for Freedom of Cannabis Act, after all that to do and, you know, all them House bills, the decrim, House Bill 1420, all of them. <laughs> Nothing. But what's left standing? The person-driven initiative. The, 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 the measure that is going to save the day. It's not going away. It just stays up there. Everybody else, you know, even legalized MDs just got something but more of like promises and words. You know, they ain't got nothing really except words. But ND for Freedom, you can go to Orange Records. You can go to Tochi Products. You can get a hold of ND Cannabis Caucus, and for the most part, they got a positive attitude, and they ain't stopping. So it is kind of neat to see that from out of all the chatter, ND for Freedom, the person-driven initiative, the the best one, really, 
created by David Thompson. Good dude. So let's give Indy for Freedom of Cannabis Act a hand. Because of the last one standing, and I love that. So anyway, Mexico. They've been talking with several legislators from all parliamentary groups who have concerns about this legislation. But if that's all they got to say, then, you know, it is not easy. And the Senate has a big problem, said Monreal Avila. We must not create imperfect laws. We must must legislate with the greatest cohesion and with the aim of solving social problems that are occurring. Neither economic purposes nor profit purposes should be placed above social interest. But I don't know who they're asking, you know, because I would imagine most Mexican you know, attendee, you know, the dudes over there, they don't, they don't care about whatever he just said. They've been waiting since 2018, and I thought that it was done. But, you know, who knows? But anyway, Virginia. Virginia did it. Uh, the House of Delegates and Senate have both accepted the governor's amendment to their respective versions of legislation to legalize cannabis in the state, uh, including a revision that will push up the timeline to allow adults to possess and cultivate cannabis for personal use this summer instead of in 2024. Well, I'd say that's pretty stinking good, don't you think? I'm not great at math, but one and a four, that's three or now. So Governor Ralph Northam and uh, people are giving these guys a lot of shout outs because they're the first southern state to, you know, pull the trigger um let's see it seems to me that the house accepted its revised measure 53 to 44 the senate clearing its legislation by vote 21 20 which don't sound good lieutenant governor justin fairfax breaks the tie following those initial votes both bodies then pass the opposite chambers bill is amended uh, one of the most notable amendments makes it so possession of cannabis by adults 21 and older will be legal on july 1st of this year rather than january 1st 2024 so that's cool um, let's see, out of sight public view, um, home cultivation will also be allowed starting in July. So that's groovy. And, uh, I don't know, I, I don't, I think I could live in Virginia. Actually, no, I don't like the humidity. It's too hot. So here's a good thing while we're talking about Mexico here. Um, I'm uh, grabbing this blog article off the board of normal DEA report. Marijuana seizures at southern border have fallen significantly following passage of statewide legislation laws. Let me say that again for the boys, huh? DEA report. Marijuana seizures at southern border have fallen significantly following passage of statewide legislation laws. Let's give the southern borders fallen significantly hand. But that's beautiful. Washington, D.C., March 4th, marijuana seizures along the southern border have fallen over 80% since 2013, according to data uh, in the agency's 2020 National Drug Drug Threat Assessment. Um, in U.S. markets, Mexican marijuana has largely been supplanted by domestic-produced cannabis. In 2019, Border Patrol seized nearly 249,000 kilograms, a decline of over 287 in 2018, CBP uh, marijuana seizures along the SWB have decreased more than 80 percent when almost 1.3 million kilograms were seized. Uh, marijuana seizures at the southern border reached an all time high in 2009 when nearly four million pounds of cannabis were con- confiscated by federal agents. When I would argue maybe two million pounds of that was crap. Should have never even made it to the border. They forced us to smoke or somebody. It's illegal. We're here to change the law, not break the law. But I'm telling you what, some of that stuff that came from Mexico should have stayed in Mexico. Can I get an amen? Nobody? But anyway, so that's that's good. That's all good news. Uh, Colorado and Washington became the first two states to legalize, which we know that. Um, the sharp decrease in U.S. demand for Mexican-produced cannabis um, Normal's uh, Justin Streckel said this dramatic shift in the cannabis supply chain is a welcome development, and it sure is. So I am, uh, I'm pretty stoked. So let's see. Now I'm, I'm working my way to South Dakota because that's what's going to, you know, um, and then I'm going to tell you, okay, so let me do this first. So Minnesota marijuana legalization bill will get House floor vote next month. I just wanted to read now everybody that's anybody knows about Minnesota and it's clicking through the committees. Um, Winkler says Minnesotans are ready for cannabis. Um, let's see. So sponsor of the room, sponsor of the reform legislation said it will move through its remaining committee stops by the end of April, setting the stage for action in the full chamber in May. And with Paul Gazelka and Waltz into it, I, who knows, you know, Minnesota, you know, I don't, I don't know. Do they take better care of their people than North Dakota? I don't know. I mean, 
I don't know. But I know a speeding ticket is bananas in Minnesota. I don't know what that means, but it means something, right? So let's see. Uh, you were, uh, Minnesota's adults 21 and older, and you can possess up to one and a half ounces of marijuana and cultivate up to eight plants, four of which could be mature. Now, me personally, if Minnesota pushes this through, and it looks like they will, that, that will be the biggest pressure put on North Dakota ever. It's our brother from another mother. We're going to be able to watch them dancing and rolling in the monies. Meanwhile, we're right here going, boy, I wish the, you know, our politicians would have held it down for the boys in the band. as me and you and them, you know. So this might be better than passing that, you know, highly restricted House Bill 1420. Just us sitting and looking in at this, you know, at the greener grass. No pun intended. Oh, yeah, no, I, t- I intended the pun. Uh, kind of talking to you with Wilson. That's what you're strapped into here at KRFF 95.9. LPFM. Uh, it's kind of a casual type of uh, kind of talk and deal with Wilson. There's really no pressure. Um, and there's good things happening like, you know, Virginia. And then when I talked last week in New York passed it. So since we've met, two states have legalized and at least one of them has cultivation in. So it's not like cultivation and home grow is a horrible push, you know, or like, you know, a, a point of contention. Because in a lot of states, cultivation and home grow is allowed. So what's the difference? You know, like North Dakota sucks and Virginia doesn't. You know, because, again, uh, nobody overdoses from cannabis. Cannabis is beautiful. It works in agriculture, medical, and leisure. I mean, it shows up for anything you want. And I would argue the you know, tobacco and booze does not do that. It may help, you know, might help your sadness, but it gives you emphysema. You know what I'm saying? So cannabis is the real MVP. And I think the bottom line is, is the fat cats don't know how to make the money off it. And they're making their money off prison for profit and the booze and the tobacco. And they don't know how to switch. And we don't really want them switching because they'll do it selfishly. And they're not going to do it like Minnesota, you know, which allows for equity, you know, equality and, you know, small business ventures. Deet, 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 deet. So what did I say in May? This should hit the, uh, the houseboat. So let me see, what are we going to talk about now? Let's talk about Illinois. Smashes marijuana sales record exceeding, guess, $100 million in March. So let's uh, let's get the numbers. And I like when I can talk about this because it's nothing but fun stuff. Um, Illinois, I've got an aunt there. i got a brother there. Um, Illinois was a crazy place. You didn't want to have a cracked windshield. They'd hit you for that. You know, cops would be sitting around waiting to bust you for speeding. It's kind of interesting that this is the state that, you know, does something that normally those cops would be, you know, jumping out of the window to get you. So according to the State Department of Financial and Professional Regulation, adults spent $109 million on recreational cannabis products in March. That's nearly $30 million more than the prior month and $20 million more than the last record was set in January. So that's fantastic. Well, it's not clear why March proved so popular for marijuana. I don't know, St. Patty's Day? I don't know. There's been an escalating trend in Illinois since legal sales launched. I suppose um, you had the uh, the people that weren't weren't scared, and they just went, you know. I, I'm not scared. And then you have, like, these people like, oh, I don't know. I feel like when I walk in there, you know, a big, you know, a big fist will come out of the thing and punch me into jail. So it's like, I don't know. You go. You go, cousin, whatnot. You go in there. And then you come out, and he's like, well, how did it go? And then, oh, it's beautiful. I got what I wanted. You know, you should go in there. Well, maybe I will, Jim. Maybe I will. And that's what you're seeing, you know. That's that's the increases. Because half of the group is like, no, nah, I don't trust this. And the others are like, oh, are you scared? I'll go in. And they go in. They come out, and they're looking all, you know, chill. They got their little bag of snacks and what have you. And the other guy doesn't because he was scared. So that's, I would imagine, who knows where this will stop, you know, in Illinois Adult Use Cannabis Monthly Sales. So let me see here. Um, Let's look at the out-of-state residence sales in March. 33, about $33.5 million of people from all over, you know, North Dakota. I don't know. I was just thinking, like, it would be wild if you took a train to Chicago because you can do it on the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Roll into Chicago, have a good time, do the thing, you know, and have, you know, have an ounce accidentally fall on your backpack. I didn't say that. 
and then come back to Fargo. I mean, it seems pretty easy, and I certainly wouldn't encourage it because it's against the law. But it's 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 opportunistic things like that that push this out of state projection, you know, because how many of that, you know, how many of the thirty three million dollars of that out of state resident sales because their ID, that's how they prove it. You're going with your ID from a different state that they don't go back to their respected states with at least, a you know, a majority of that. But anyway, average daily sales reached approximately $3.5 million in March. That's crazy. Three milli mil a day. Man, I mean, just imagine those security guards. If this trend keeps up, Illinois could see more than $1 billion in adult use marijuana sales in 2021. And that would translate into a significant windfall of tax revenue for the state. Last year, Illinois sold about $670 million in cannabis and took in two hundred and five. million. Point four million dollars in tax revenue so that's uh you know that's fantastic um officials have emphasized that the tax dollars from all these sales are being put to good use and that's the other good thing um for example the state announced in january that it's distributing 31 million in grants funded by tax dollars to communities that have been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs that's fantastic the funds are part of the state's restore reinvest and renew program which was established under the illinois adult use cannabis legalization law it requires 25 percent of tax dollies to be put in that fund and used to provide disadvantaged people with services such as legal aid youth development community reentry, and financial support i mean and that's that's what you do with your tax dollars. I mean, Illinois is raping you for taxes. That's just what they do. But when they put it in this thing, the restore, reinvest, and renew, you don't mind getting raped so much. I mean, it still hurts, but you got a smile on your face. So Illinois smashes marijuana sales records. That's good. And again, as soon as they give me another one, we'll, uh, we'll get into that. Now, Kelo, K-E-L-O, Pierre, South Dakota. I'll read the... the uh, the headline lawyers in south dakota marijuana battle turn up heat against one another so i don't know if that's good when you want one of those to win now keep in mind um it's to get amendment a which is the you know they well first of all let me start over people voted in amendment a it went to the voters 54 percent of voters marked yes on the november 3rd ballot okay but christy through her that governor christy don't know him, through her head of state Basically, the Highway Patrol, Colonel Rick Miller, is trying to stop a memony. So she is. Her private attorneys convinced a circuit judge to declare the election invalid. Her private attorneys convinced a circuit judge. I mean, the poor little circuit judge. You've got them private attorneys that roll in from dictator uh, Christie. I mean, they're going to fold. They're just going to fold. You need people with backbones and money saying the amendment actually was a revision that should have gone to a state constitutional convention and that it improperly covered more than one subject. So now they're going to try to prove that that isn't the case. And then if they do, then, you know, it'll come back. So let me read this. Uh, Colonel Miller's interest in this lawsuit is not based on his status as a representative of constituent taxpayers. It is based upon the infringement of the unconstitutional duties and authority that would result from Amendment A, diverting authority from the Highway Patrol to the Department of Revenue. Ah. Let's see. The infringement of the constitutional duties and authority that would result from Amendment A, diverting authority from the Highway Patrol to the Department of Revenue. Christopher Summers wrote for the governor's side. Well, I mean, I don't know if you can read between the lines, but it seems to me that this is about money again. And it diverted authority from the cops who suck. Everybody knows South Dakota cops suck. And what are you going to do about that? Well, don't make it so easy for them to, you know, get all on you. So anyway, South Dakota can implement the medical marijuana program in November. So that was a big fight. You know, that was a big fight, too, but they got that going. Timothy Bayon and Brendan Johnson, the amendment sponsor, appealed the circuit judge's decision, uh, concluded Bill Bayon in the latest filing. He says Amendment A involves a single subject and is not a constitutional revision. So the exact, uh, exact opposite as the cop Miller and Christie. So they're saying they're saying the complete opposite. They say it involves more than subject, more than one subject. And it, and it is a constitutional revision. But, again, I know these guys vetted it. I know they ran it through the process. But I, if, if I were to be honest with you, I'd say the biggest guy, Christie, and these, and Miller, they're going to slam through these lawyers. They ain't going to have a chance. It's just not going to happen. 
And I wish it could, but man, when you've got everybody against you up in that, you know, power play, I don't know. So a date hasn't been publicly announced for oral argument. Uh, April 28th, I heard something was going to happen. Um, I've got the uh, attorneys for Epilet Coronal. And then, man, so there's like all kinds of a. So let me see. South Dakotans for better marijuana laws. Randolph Seeler, William Stocker, Charles Parkinson, and Melissa are the defendants. Um, it looks to me like Steve, let me see, Sheriff Kevin Thome and his official date to date versus Steve Barnett in his official capacity at South Dakota Secretary of State. Oh, I don't know what that means. Do you? But anyway, that's uh that's that. And uh it just it just burns my hind in because because it does. But anyway, so I don't know. I just don't know. I I really worry that they're going to uh, just smash, smash through. Um, So let me see here. I'm just going to read a a few other things here. Alabama House Committee approves medical marijuana legalization bill already passed the Senate. Uh, Virginia lawmakers approve the amendment. Um, Texas uh, lawmakers tackle marijuana decrim medical cannabis and hamping committee hearings. Uh, South Carolina senator threatens to block every single other bill if medical marijuana doesn't get a vote. Um, like I said, uh, Mexico marijuana, Mexico, Mexico marijuana legalization bill advances in Senate for a second day in a row. Um, the chamber approved the legislation. So that's that. So let's see. Washington lawmakers hear drug decrim bill after Supreme Court strikes down prohibition. Uh, Biden said he's too busy to decrim cannabis. Iowa governor sued over delay in asking for federal medical marijuana exemption from DEA. So DEA's proposed hemp rules are contrary to intent of Congress. Oh, that brings me. So Indy for Freedom of Cannabis Act. That's what's happening in North Dakota. Get involved. Go sign it. Push it through. Whatever you need to do. Become loud about it. Because once again, it's the only thing that, you know, only thing still running. You know, it's the only one that's still pushing. Everybody else folded. The government folded. Your, your, you know, your, whatever they are, your uh, district representative didn't, you know. Or senator didn't handle you. Nobody did what you needed. If anything, they may have gotten stinking THC Delta 8 finangled, and that's just horrible. So, again, I'd be watching that. I, I don't know, because it's pretty clear that under the hemp law, Delta 8 is allowed. But I heard the lady at the Capitol say that it isn't, and it is illegal. Now, I'm pretty sure she's wrong, but just why are they even saying that? You know, and that House Bill 1, 2, and 3, you know, not good. But anyway, Orange Records, Toti Products is the only places down here by me. Now, there are others. You can go on their website and find that out yourself. But, uh, yeah, yeah, like I said, it's the only thing left. Everything else fell. The legislative session is done. We got nothing from them. If anything, we got a strategically placed, we're in the clear from them. Like they didn't, they weren't required any more pressure. It was almost like I imagine them in the office going, you know, their hand on their forehead. Whoo, we almost got forced into making the cannabis legal. Whoo, good thing they got, you know, we called her bluff and, and it's not legal and there's nothing showing except for that little pesky ND for Freedom of Cannabis Act person driven initiative. Still pushing, still alive. They don't think much of it, but that's how underdogs get the thing done. They sneak further. They sneak further. They don't get any kind of, you know, pr- uh, no pressure. Nobody's paying attention to them until they're all the way to the end. They got the flag in the thing and they're like, suck it. You know, we got the constitutional amendment. Well, you were busy thinking we weren't getting anywhere. We were getting somewhere. So to me, that's, you know, if you're part of ND for Freedom, um, I would take some pride in the fact that, you know, you're the only one still sitting. And then legalize MD, sure, that like I said, there's talk of it. But nobody's got boots on the ground. But you guys, you know, and I'm the mouthpiece. I'm just going to keep talking to talk, talk, talking about the benefits of cannabis. You know, North Dakota has only one thing. It's a person-driven initiative. It's been vetted. You know, it allows to grow 21 plus, 12 plants. And it's a constitutional amendment measure which the politicians certainly don't want, but they didn't help us because they didn't want it. They just didn't do anything because they didn't figure we'd get anywhere. So it wasn't like they didn't help us at all. 
So I'm, I'm more motivated, and I hope that you guys are too, to stick it to the uh, proverbial man, you know, because they, we watched what they did, and they did nothing but a lot of talk again, you know, a bunch of well, give and take when it ended up just being uh, nothing but giving. You know what I'm saying? But this hour of programming on KRFF 95.9 LPFM is being underwritten by Wild Terra. Wild Terra is an urban cider in downtown Fargo that features locally made craft ciders with a focused on dry and experimental ciders that also serves beer, wine, and kombucha. Wild Terra is located at the corner of University and MP Avenue with lots of easy parking and a new outdoor patio, plus they're dog and family friendly. Open seven days a week. Wild Terra adventurously well-crafted. Check out more at wildterra.com. Can I talk into you with Wilson every Thursday? 420, I open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And at 445, I introduce the next two songs. Then I come back, I tuck you guys in, and I say what's coming up next. And then I say that I'll be back. And then I push the play thing. And then bingo, bingo. So this is Ben Apple Gas. Oh, man, that's fantastic. The one who hideth me featuring Eddie Vedder, if you could tell that. Leslie Jordan, company's coming, 2021, fan Fantastic little ditty there. Can I talk ND with Wilson every Thursday from 4 to 5? We talk about cannabis news in a positive light. This is no different. Uh, thanks for coming, and I'll see you uh, next Thursday. This hour is brought to you by Becky's Body Butter, Black Cottage Alchemy. You can go to Odd Stand's Gift Shop or Tochi Products right here beside me downtown Fargo, and you can sign the ND for Freedom of Cannabis Act petition while you're in there, or if you're at Orange Records, go in there. Sign it. Uh, again, uh, Becky's Body Butter is made with kosher, full-spectrum CBD, North Dakota-grown hemp, and it's got the three things that the wise men brought for baby Jesus. So, Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 LPFM, Moorhead Fargo, 701-478-4959, RadioFreeFargo.org. You can go and donate. You can listen to stream shows anywhere in the world, and I encourage you to do that and donate a little extra cashy-poo in the same time uh up next would be stinky arts music mark but not today we got locals on the eight radio free madness next thursday you got side stage with trab noon to three Pooh, that's a lot so educate yourself and educate others um normally i would kick off with a big fat piece and david allen but i i don't know uh, i couldn't figure it out so instead i'm going to play king gizzard and the lizard wizard to play you uh, play you out but i got so excited i still got two minutes so again cannabis legalization it's going to happen but maybe it might be from people maybe maybe the people got to do it so let's do it you know indie for freedom of cannabis act is it orange records like i said the tochi products um get a hold of indie cannabis caucus if you want to get involved I'll be back here next Thursday. We're going to talk about cannabis legalization. Oh, and it's going to be my birthday. So I just thought I'd tell you in advance if you wanted to bring, you know, like I like ponies, you know, I I like ponies. So, you know, like I like bacon strapped onto the back of a pony, you know. So anyway, folks, it's been good. I'm out of here. And here comes King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Gamma Knife. See you next Thursday. Peace. (laughs) 